Hey guys, this time around we'll be covering the human immune system and the explanation will be done in two parts. So, let's jump right in! Immunity refers to the body's ability to defend against foreign agents and the human immune system consists of lymphoid organs, tissues, cells, and soluble molecules like antibodies. A wide range of organisms belonging to bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoans, helminths, etc. could cause diseases in a man. Such disease-causing organisms are called pathogens, and the overall ability of the host, humans in our case, to fight against these disease-causing organisms conferred by the immune system is called immunity. Immunity can be of two types, innate and acquired immunity. Innate or natural immunity is the body's general defense that is present at the time of birth. It comprises the inborn immune mechanisms that do not depend upon previous exposure to an antigen. It consists of four types of barriers. Physical barriers, physiological barriers, cellular barriers, and cytokine barriers. Physical barriers like the skin, mucous coating of the epithelium lining, the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urogenital tracts prevent the entry of microorganisms. Physiological barriers like acid in the stomach, saliva in the mouth, tears from eyes prevent microbial growth. Cellular barriers like certain types of leukocytes, WBC, such as monocytes and natural killer cells can destroy microbes. Finally, cytokine barriers like virus-infected cells secrete proteins called interferons, which protect non-infected cells from further viral infection. On the other hand, acquired immunity is pathogen-specific. It is characterized by memory. When the body encounters a pathogen for the first time, it produces a response called primary response, which is of low intensity. Subsequent encounters with the same pathogen elicits a highly intensified secondary or anamnestic response. The primary and secondary immune responses are carried out with the help of two special types of lymphocytes present in our blood, i.e. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. The B cells produce an army of proteins in response to pathogens into our blood to fight with them. These proteins are called antibodies. The T cells themselves do not secrete antibodies, but help B cells produce them. Another differentiation in immunity is whether it is active or passive. When a host is exposed to antigens, which may be in the form of living or dead microbes or other proteins, antibodies are produced in the host body. This type of immunity is called active immunity. Active immunity is low and takes time to give its full effective response. Injecting the microbes deliberately during immunization or natural infection induce active immunity. When ready-made antibodies are directly given to protect the body against foreign agents, it is called passive immunity. Do you know why mother's milk is considered essential for newborn infants? The yellowish fluid colostrum secreted by the mother during the initial days of lactation has abundant antibodies to protect the infant. The fetus also receives some antibodies from their mother through the placenta during pregnancy. These are some examples of passive immunity. The body is protected by three lines of defense, where the innate immune system acts as the first and second line of host defense. It is conserved from flies to mammals. The first line of defense includes physical and chemical barriers, like skin, dead cells, mucus and gastric acid, HCL in the stomach. The epidermal barriers of the skin prevent the pathogens from entering the body. In addition, the human skin contains sweat glands that secrete a wide array of antimicrobial peptides like dermcidin, which inserts itself into microbial cell wall, forming pores that lead to cell lysis. Up next is mucus lining. Mucus linings are present in the respiratory and the gastrointestinal tracts, which are paths for food and air to travel into the body. Mucus acts as both a physical and a chemical barrier. Physical as mucus is sticky and can trap pathogens and chemical as they have antimicrobial enzymes and peptides that can kill pathogenic cells. Tears, made up of water, electrolytes, 
proteins, lipids, and mucins are also a part in the first line of defense. According to the type of tears, basal, reflex, and emotional, the composition varies significantly. For example, in basal tears, which appear as a constant shield keeping debris, dust, and follicles away, protein and lipid content is highest. HCl, more commonly known as stomach acid, has a very acidic pH of 1.5 to 3.5. Most pathogens can't survive such extreme pH and tend to die. Then comes the second line of defense, which involves non-specific response by the innate immune system. Let's first understand some of the terms involved. Monocytes are the largest of the WBCs. They differentiate into macrophages, microglial cells or dendritic cells upon reaching the injured slash infected tissue and under inflammatory conditions. These cells have the ability to sense and migrate towards gradients of signaling molecules such as certain chemokines. These signaling molecules guide the cells to locations of infection. Macrophages stimulate action against pathogens by amoeboid movement or phagocytosis. Essentially, macrophages consume the pathogen entirely and digest them. Dendritic cells are antigen-presenting cells, APCs, that initiate the adaptive immune response. Antigens are molecules present on the surface of pathogens that help them attach to and attack human cells. They are molecules that are complementary to the shape of antigens, so they essentially bind to antigens and prevent the pathogens from attacking human cells. Dendritic cells present these antigens on their surface to help T cells start the third line of defense, which is pathogen specific attack. Along the same lines, microglial cells are resident immune cells of the brain and spinal cord responsible for the elimination of microbes, dead cells, and redundant synapses, protein aggregates, and other particulate and soluble antigens that may endanger the central nervous system, CNS. Moving on to humoral components, neutrophils are the most common granulocytes which make up about 40 to 60% of all WBCs in the human body. Neutrophils are phagocytic cells that ingest and digest the pathogen and then eventually go through apoptosis, so program cell death. Lysosomes are potent antibacterial molecules that are involved in the disruption of bacterial cell walls by exhibiting hydrolytic activity a chemical reaction that uses water to break down a compound. They hydrolyze and cleave the bonds of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is an essential and unique cross-linked bacterial cell wall component that provides structural strength. Thus, the disruption of the peptidoglycan present in the bacterial cell walls has fatal consequences for the bacteria and results in cell lysis, which is breaking of cells. Let's now take a look at some real action. Our body holds a set of special effector killer cells called natural killer cells that are involved in the elimination of tumors and microbe infected cells, including cancer cells. They do this by triggering apoptosis in the target cell by releasing perforin and granzymes. Perforin, PRF1, is thought to form pores in the target cell membrane through which granzymes may pass directly into the cytosol. Porphyrin granzyme-induced apoptosis is the main pathway used by cytotoxic lymphocytes to eliminate virus-infected or transformed cells. These cells are large granular lymphocytes that express various types of immunoreceptors that are all designed to sense pathological changes of cell cells, while the mechanisms used by NK cells to discriminate between target cells and normal cells remain poorly understood, great progress has been made recently. In summary, natural killer cells, neutrophiles, lysosomes, macrophages, microglial cells, and dendritic cells are all cells part of the second line of defense that patrol the body to kill pathogens by varying mechanisms. Hope you found the immune system fascinating. In the next part, we will look at the third line of defense, which is pathogen-specific. It is extremely interesting.